All right, so today we're going to be working on an 820-3024 board that doesn't turn on. So when you plug the charger in, remember, these are the Core i5, i7 series boards that are supposed to turn on automatically. When you plug the charger in on this one, you do get a green light, but there is no fan spinning. So the first thing that I'm going to do is the same thing that I tell all you guys to do on these boards when you're first starting. And the first thing to do is to check your power rails to see what is working, what's not working. So let's just, I don't have my open broadcast monitor here since I gave the monitor to the guy next door. So I let him borrow it for his DVR since there was some robbery or some shit took place outside. So I'm going to be constantly switching back here to make sure open broadcaster is working. So we go through the power rails and the first power rail here is PP bus G3 hot. So let's see what level of power it is that I have on PP bus G3 hot. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go over to the board view software. And on the board view software, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to type n, type PP bus underscore G3 hot. And this is going to show me everywhere in the board that PP bus G3 hot shows up so that I can measure it. And let's just rotate this so that it's the same way on the desk as it is uh, on the board view software. So I can measure for it on here, right over here on F7040. This is a great spot and a great place to measure. So let's get the multimeter out. So remember to measure voltage on a multimeter. What I do is I take the multimeter and I put it to voltage DC mode, which is that little flat line over there. Then I'm going to have the black probe plugged into the COM port. The black probe is going to go on ground. Ground here is a screw hole. Let's see if I can get it so you can read the voltage. It's all the way on the bottom. So we have ground is going to be a screw hole uh, on the metal portion, and the red is going to be on the fuse. Now, the schematic says it's supposed to be 8 point something volts, but as you can see, I'm getting 2 point something volts. 3 volts. Now, that's not what I should be getting. That's wrong. Now, what I want to do is I want to see why is that voltage not being created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my multimeter over to diode mode to check for a short circuit to ground. And what this is going to do is it's going to measure the voltage drop across two points. So now I'm going to take the red probe, and the red probe is going to go on the metal by the screw hole, and the black probe is going to go on F7040. And 0 0.001 voltage drop to ground. Now, if I were to take a board that... I, I shouldn't call this board good based on how it looks, but... Yeah, never mind that portion. I was going to show you what a, short to, uh, what a proper board was supposed to measure, but I noticed that the board is that I was going to use is... Like, the heat sink screw holes are soldered off the board and has a warranty sticker on it from a motherboard repair company whose name rhymes with fuck you, so not touching that. Anyway, that's a short to ground over there. Now, what you would do to find, something's going to be causing that short to ground. And in a previous video, I showed you how to find a short to ground. So I'm not going to go through that entire thing now. This time, that was when you couldn't figure it out through visual inspection uh, very easily. On this one, I was able to figure it out through burning myself, because while I had the charger plugged in, I touched the component that was shorted to ground while I picked the board up. So let me just show you what it is over, I, that I saw here in the microscope. So let's just set this up so it's not all blue, because that's annoying. There we go. I love this little OptiCam. This capacitor over here. See that? So this, I'm going to show you what this one looks like and then what a good one that's not screwed up looks like. So that's split open. This is a good capacitor. See? Good capacitor with just, you know, standard fuzz on it from somebody who never cleans the inside of their computer. But that's a fucked capacitor. That's a beat to shit destroyed capacitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a capacitor off of another motherboard. So I'm going to take another capacitor off of another motherboard. And just to show you how it is I know the specifications of this capacitor, we're going to switch over to the board view software. And the board view software is going to tell me what that is. So I'm going to scroll over over here. And, and when I go over to the board view software and I click on that capacitor, it tells me it's C7514. So when I go over here, I'm going to search for C7514. And look. It tells me 62 microfarads, 11 volts, case B2. It tells me all the information that I would need to buy that capacitor. Now, here's the important thing when you're going to search for these components. You're not going to go to mouser.com and search for C7514. That doesn't make any sense. Here, let me explain how that is. So what does C7514 mean? That means that that's the 7514th capacitor or whatever in this particular circuit. That's what Apple is calling that capacitor. So that's like when you call your mother mom, right? Now, you know who mom is, the same way that Apple knows what that capacitor is. But if you were to go to the store and say, I, I can't find my mom, do you know where she is? Or do you know mom's number? They're not going to know 
who your mom is. You would need to say, you know, like, my mom's name is Ann Smith. So to the rest of the world, if you want to talk about your mom, you need to, and they don't know who you are, you need to say Ann Smith because that's your mother's name. The same thing is true with capacitors. You can't go to mouser.com and say, I want C7514 because, again, what the fuck is C7514? They don't know. That's a number that Apple is using or to describe the capacitor. What you need to say is you need to go over to your schematic and then you need to like roll over over here. You need to say, I need a 62 mi microfarad capacitor. I need it to be a 20% tolerance or higher. I need 11 volts or higher. I want it to be an electrolytic capacitor, and I want it to be in a case B2 sizing. See, then they're actually going to know what it is they need to give you. But C7514, that's no information. Again, Ann Smith, who lives at 100 Dwayne Street, that's information. Mom? Again, like I don't, I don't, I don't know where to find that. I don't know where to find your mom. I don't know, uh, you know where your mom lives, what her name is, what her number is. I'm not going to have that information if you just say mom. But if you say Ann Smith, who lives at this place, then I can, I can help you. So let's go ahead and replace this thing with a capacitor from a donor motherboard. So I'm going to turn on the noisy stuff. So I already have the noisy air conditioner on. Now I'm going to have the noisy rework station on, and also the noisy air filter. And again, a lot of people ask, why do I have the microphone close to my mouth in videos? Wouldn't it sound better if you used one that was a little further away or a shotgun above your head? I love shotgun microphones for many different things, especially if we're going to be doing any type of filming at the class or live filming with a camcorder. But let me turn off the noise pl uh, cancellation plugins for a second. Now let me pick up the soldering iron. This is what it sounds like when my head is buried in the microscope. So if I'm talking and I want the microphone near me, this is what it sounds like with my head buried in the microscope. And this is with a microphone that's right next to my face. So with a microphone that is right next to my face, this is what it sounds like. Can you imagine what it would sound like if I had the microphone further away? You would not hear me at all in this type of rework environment. It would be garbage, especially if you're one of those people who's listening to my content on a laptop or a cash register where you work, or if you're listening to videos at work in between customers walking in so you could learn and try to make some extra money on the side doing this. You're my target audience, and I realize that it's more important that you hear my instruction than it is that my voice sound perfectly natural and the microphone be off screen. So anyway, here's with the noise filtering plug-in turned back on. It's a pretty good plug-in, isn't it? Pretty good stuff. Anyway, let's uh, put it on a little higher, cause, and let's get to work here. So first thing we're going to do is remove this capacitor. Remember, this one is a polarized capacitor, so it's important to know which way it went originally. Can't forget that. That's important. Okay, just finished burning myself, so back to work. So remove the capacitor. Now, applying cold water and soap to a burn right after you get it, it actually does help. Burn myself on the hot air station, going to turn the damn hacko on. That was stupid. Why well, I put the FX951 right behind here? I put it right next to and behind the handle of the FR801 to save desk space because, you know, any of you people who've actually had a chance to visit and see my office understand that there is no space here. It's this small space, very small space. But yeah, so it's, it's, I like saving space and I like trying to be neat, but I also like not burning myself, so it's a compromise. This isn't really a great space to get my iron in. Because the thing is, I don't want to touch the casing of the other capacitors, which I'm violently failing at. Let's use a different tip. The curvy tip is not the tip for this application. The curvy tip is definitely not the tip for this application. You have to use the right tip for the right application. And it's worth having multiple tips if they'll help you out, because tips are 15 bucks. Okay, let's wait for this thing to get hot. Or it's 700, 800, 840. Yep. Right tip for the job gets it done.
All right. Now we're going to take a cap from a donor board, and it's going to go on this one. So in this one, the top is going to be positive and the bottom is going to be ground. So now I got to take a cap off another board. I have to orient it properly. So this is the board I'm going to be stealing it from. Bottom is ground and top is positive. I See, that's another 62 microfarad capacitor. And say, okay, so this is oriented properly. Hopefully the casing is close enough that it matches. I don't have this exact board in stock because, again, this is kind of old shit. You know, this is, this is 2011 11-inch air. It's not really popular enough to, for me to have a donor board available for it. So one thing Apple boards love to do, it is absorb heat and make soldering difficult. I don't really have a tip that's going to be good at fitting in there, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to clean that the way I'd like to. I might just have to live with it being as is. I'm not a person who's good with living with things as is. But in this situation, that's just too tight an area for me to do the, the exact type of cleaning job that I would like. Come on, I could remove the ones around it, but then I'm just going to have the same problems when I put those ones back. So I added some flux, and I'm going to try to see what I can do about the excess solder. Let me clean my iron off as much as I can. Oh, that actually came out pretty good. See that? We're getting this to look factory. After this gets ultrasonically cleaned, you may never tell them there, except for the fact that the capacitor on the board is not the one that, <laughs> not the one that came with it. Let's make sure it's flat with the board. And I broke it. Awesome. Check it out. That, was that dumb or what? I actually pushed hard enough that I broke what I put on the board. That's pretty dumb, ain't it? That's pretty stupid now. Oh, yeah. That's, that's dumb. I caught that on camera, too. You see that? Lewis destroying a board caught on camera. Was that not stupid or what? Was that? Yep. Okay. We'll just take another one. See, that's one of those examples of trying to make something perfect and kind of screwing it up more than it was before. So I lifted the capacitor a little on one side while I was heating it. So I wanted to flatten it back down after I got rid of the excess solder and I pushed. And what did I do? I destroyed it. Let's try not to do that again. I'm gonna, so just to make sure it doesn't lift up, I'm going to push it down, but not hard this time. See, before it lifted up when I did that. But this time that's not going to happen because I'm pushing down. All right, that's about as good as I'm going to get this. 
So now what I'm interested in is, is this actually turn on and work? So let's see what I get out of it when I plug the charger in. Let's see what voltage I get, and let's also see if I get it to turn on. So when I plug the charger in, the most important thing happens here, the ultimate test, the guaranteed sign that this board is 100% fully functional and requires no further work from me to get it to perfect functionality. The fan is spinning. Is that not beautiful or what? 